Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Esa Klemetti. I'm prostodontist and I've been working and teaching uh, prosto uh, for about 30 years in Canada, in Kuwait, Norway and United Kingdom and of course in Finland. Today it's my pleasure to uh, give a lecture about a simple procedure of fabrication of uh, removable acrylic-based complete and partial dentures. These are today's topics. Uh, as you can see, we'll go through the fabrication process. Uh, however, we are not going to do it in detail because each of these items would cover at least one hour's presentation. However, we have a look into uh, each of them and uh, we'll discuss some details, uh, especially as uh, simple as possible, because I have tried to uh, make this fabrication a little bit more simple than perhaps in some other cultures where uh, for example, acrylic-based partial dentures uh, are called transitional, which means uh, they are not meant for long-term use. These abbrevi 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 abbreviations we uh, use and I use in this presentation on the text slides. However, uh, I will use the long terms uh, the complete uh, terms uh, when I talk, uh, when you study uh, the slides afterwards, you'll be able to uh, have the explanation of the abbreviation by having a look at these slides. So today we'll talk about the fabrication of a complete denture for the maxilla and a acrylic based partial denture for the mandible. We are not dealing with uh, dentures with metal frame because uh, the fabrication process should be a bit more complicated. And on the other hand, uh, in Namibia, I have a feeling you have you got much more use for partial dentures with acrylic base uh, as we see. Uh, the last remaining teeth most often in the mandible are the anteriors. Uh, in the maxilla it's much more easier to extract all the teeth and make a complete denture, but in the lower jaw uh, the retention of a denture is not as good as in the maxilla. In the maxilla there's the suction cup effect but because we so far haven't invented a horseshoe shaped suction cup, uh, some remaining teeth in the mandible are very useful for the retention. And on the other hand, uh, quite often uh, the dentures are uh, the first ones of a patient, which means that it's much easier for the patient to learn to use especially the lower denture, the mandibular denture, if there are some, reta some retainers left. Uh, uh, as all treatments also, this will start with the treatment planning. We know the difference between the maxilla and the mandible in terms of retention, as I mentioned. Uh, however, we should select the good ones for the mandible. Uh, by removing bad teeth, of course, we'll uh, limit the sources of in infection. And also, if we keep the good ones, then <laughs> the, the prognosis of the dentures, of course, will be much better because we can expect the teeth to remain there longer. However, before we start the, pay, uh, the treatment, we should explain the patient about what's going to happen. There will be lots of difficulties, and especially if the, if the patient hasn't worn a dent before, 
uh, every, everything is new. We also have to uh, talk about the oral hygiene, the maintenance of the dentures, uh, how to try to keep the remaining teeth as long as possible. As I mentioned before, uh, I have made some shortcuts or I, I'll provide you with some shortcuts for, uh, uh, for the fabrication process, mainly in the impression uh, part, which means that in this presentation uh, we'll use the alginate, the pre preliminary impression for the fabrication of the lower denture. However, for the maxilla we'll take a, an impression with a border molded custom tray. Uh, my suggestion is that if you don't have a good selection or teeth or you would like to limit uh, ordering different kinds of shades or, or sides or shapes, you could only have two or three uh, most often used sizes or colors, shades. As uh, later we'll see, there are lots of articulators or occludators. If we try to simplify the fabrication, perhaps an occludator could, could be just as good as any for, for, this, uh, for this work. And then also the actual processing of the dentures, whether it's possible to use injectable materials or even uh, poured acrylic, well, it's, uh, it's up to you. So, we'll go into the impression first. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, for the uh, final model, for the working cast, we will use uh, an alginate impression in the mandible. Uh, in the maxilla, we'll take an impression with polyvinyl uh, and a border molded custom tray. Anyway, Otherwise, this uh, sequencing of, of the fabrication will follow the common, uh, common setup of, of a denture fabrication. What we need first is an alginate impression, a preliminary impression. And as you all know, we'll need custom trays, alginate powder, measure cups, a spatula and a mixing bowl. Uh, what is important, especially if you want to make a good impression, uh, a good alginate impression, is that you will measure the powder adequately, accurately, according to the manufacturer's instructions. Which means that uh, after you have shaken the, the powder in the container and scooped up an amount of, of powder, then you will just remove the excess by tilting the spatula backwards. In that way, the spatula won't pack too much material into the cup. This is how the manufacturer has instructed us to measure an, exact, an accurate amount of, of powder. Cold water, of course, makes the working time shorter. We can uh, regulate the, the working time in this way. And uh, most often it's, it's handy uh, just to add the water uh, rather than to add powder into the water. In this way you don't mess up too much, especially when you vigorously mix the, the alginate in the bowl. And of course we want to be tidy. And the patient will appreciate if we are tidy and the, uh, the custom tray which we are going to put into the patient's mouth will look tidy. It's, it's nicer in that way. When taking the impression for the maxilla, it's always easier to uh, stand behind the denture, pull the cheek of the patient with your left hand or with the mirror and perhaps the, with the tray you'll just pull the other cheek and, and 
turn the denture, uh, the, the, uh, the impression tray into the mouth. For the lower jaw, taking an impression is easier if you stand in front of the patient and in that way you will be able to monitor the, bu the buccal areas, move the cheeks aside. As you can see, uh, when you put the impression tray into the mouth, you can also pull the cheek, uh, the right corner of the, of the lips with the tray and in a way turn the uh, the tray into the mouth. In the maxilla, uh, try to remember the seat, the posterior border of the tray in place first and then lift the anterior. In that way the excesses will flow forwards and there will be less suffocating material going into the throat. You have to monitor the patient all the time and for, perhaps you can talk with him or her. Uh, in this picture you can see how difficult it sometimes is for the patient and of course I didn't want to bother the patient uh, for this picture so this is myself. So in the alternate impression we should see the essential structures of the mouth uh, especially in the mandible uh, now as we are going to use the alternate impression uh, for the uh, final cast, you should see the buccal shelves, which are the major uh, weight-bearing areas in the mandible, in the mandibular denture, and also the lineal extensions where we more or less would extend the lineal flanges of the denture. In the maxilla, uh, we'll use this impression only for the fabrication of, of the custom tray. So, uh, the impression of the mandible is a bit more complicated in this case, especially if there are long teeth in the anterior region, you may have to tilt the tray downwards in the posterior region because otherwise you're not able to impress the lineal extension, the millohyoid area, etc. In the maxilla, as I mentioned, we'll use the custom tray for the impression and because uh, this is because we want to maximize the suction cup effect. Uh, for the maximum suction cup effect, we'll mold the borders of the denture, as you can see in the lower picture. Uh, just a little bit more about that later. Uh, the custom tray is made on the preliminary, preliminary model. Uh, you can use any material. Uh, we nowadays use uh, light curable materials, but, uh, but any acrylic tray material can be used. We'll, use, uh, we'll leave the, sh uh, the borders of the custom tray short. Uh, just about two millimeters in order to uh, have some have some room for the border molding material. When making the custom tray, there are lots of different practices using spacers, etc., etc. I'm not going to go into those details. We'll just make a simple custom tray here with no spacers. The idea of border molding is to fill the vestibule. Uh, to make it as long as the soft tissues uh, allow, which means the muscles, the uh, ligaments, they will all limit and shape the border of the tray and the becoming denture. And in this way the denture won't loosen when the patient talks, uh, does all the possible movements with the cheeks and mouth. For the border molding we'll use something heavy material, medium, heavy, medium, but a polyvinyl compound, you know, compound, it's the traditional, it's a bit hard to use because you tend to burn the mouth of the patient easily. And also light curable tray materials are useful. You just apply, as you can see in this picture, you just apply the material on the border of the tray 
perhaps warm it up in hot water, it will soften and then you have all the time in the world to, to mold the borders in the mouth. However, I myself use uh, medium body uh, polyvinyl. You can border mold the whole tray just in one, one shot and well, it will take one and a half, two minutes. The important thing is that the borders won't be under or overextended. We were aiming at uh, having a good suction cup effect. Uh, for the actual wash uh, impression or the final impression, we'll use light body impression material or as it's sometimes called wash which means that we are pretty much trying to achieve an anatomical impression of the tissues. The pressure areas uh, will be at the borders, if there are any. However, the palate, the ruga area, will be impressed with wash and, and uh, not so much pressure will be directed on those tissues. Of course, now as we have no spacer, there will be some pressure. Anyway, with the wash, we most likely will have the easiest uh, way to, to seat the, uh, the uh, tray in the mouth. And now this is important. Remember that you only paint the inside of the impression tray with a thin layer of the material because it definitely will be much easier to see the, the, the tray in the same position where uh, you border molded the tray and also there will be less excesses flowing backwards. The patient should make some functional move, movements like sucking your finger, opening the mouth wide and then moving the low, lower jaw left and right. In that way he or she will uh, shape the borders of the becoming denture. Because uh, in the palatal area there is no vestibule, we'll grind a groove uh, palatally, transversally across uh, the palatal tissues through the foveole palatini. It might be from half to one and a half millimeters deep, perhaps a bit more shallow in the middle because the palate is, is harder there. Anyway, in this way, we'll seal also that part of the denture. And this is all for, uh, for having the best possible suction cup effect. Okay, then we'll go into the uh, jaw relations. After having taken the, the impressions, we'll fabricate the so-called jaw relation records, uh, JRR, uh, these records are the tool for defining the, the jaw relationship. These will be made on the final impressions. Not, there's no use of making them on preliminary impressions because anyway they don't uh, sit on uh, different casts. Uh, similarly, we'll make them on the final impressions on which we'll also make the final dentures. When you uh, try the, uh, the maxillary, and yes, you will try the maxillary jaw relation record first in the mouth. You have to explain the patient that this has nothing to do with the denture. There's uh, literally nothing in this piece of wax and acrylic of the, of the final product. However, this is only a tool. The patient will understand. So, uh, with the maxillary denture, with the maxillary record, you first define the visibility of the becoming front teeth, the support of the lip, you will define the, uh, the midline, and uh, you first cut the front region of the wax rim horizontal, parallel to the pupil line, and, and uh, scribe the, the midline. 
As I mentioned, the visibility of the wax will indicate the visibility of the teeth, so you will adjust the height. If the lip, upper lip is long, uh, the, the teeth tend to show a bit less than if the upper lip is short. In, in that case, people usually show more their front teeth. So anyway, this is something you will learn somewhere else reading a book. So the aesthetic aspects, they, uh, we, have, we haven't got time too much for, for them in this uh, lecture. So once you are done with the anterior part, the visibility, the lip support is, is fine. Uh, yes, uh, there are some tools for defining the, the, the plane, uh, the so-called fox plane is one. You can use the mirror or any other tool, ruler, for uh, adjusting the tilt of the plane. Anyway, uh, I personally don't use anything, only, only, only my, my vision. And perhaps I'll stretch the upper lip parallel with the pupil line and, and in that way compare it with the, the plane of the wax ring. So you are an artist. I mentioned you will shape the lip. Uh, from a side you can view the, the contour of the lip and the vermilion area, the uh, art of Aimer should become visible. Uh, the soft tissues of the upper lip quite often with no teeth. They are sunken, uh, crimpled. Uh, you know how they look. Uh, yes, and by the way, you can use, if the patient has an old denture, you can always ask about the good qualities of the old denture, about the visibility, etc. If the patient wants to have them copied to the new denture, it's always used, useful. When the front region is ready, don't touch it anymore. Uh, we'll move on into adjusting the posterior part of the wax ring. Uh, here we can also use the fox plane if we wish. Uh, the camper plane, it's the main reference plane for the occlusal wax ring and the, the dental arts. We'll just cut the posterior parts of the wax ring parallel with the camper plane from Tragus Alanasi. And when we are done with that, it's the upper part, the upper maxillary wax rim jaw relation ready. It's ready. Once we're done with that, we'll adjust the lower jaw, the mandibular wax rim to fit evenly, to bite evenly together with the uh, maxillary uh, jaw relation record and define the vertical dimension of occlusion. This is uh, quite important as well, because if the occlusion, the vertical dimension is too high, it will be difficult for the patient to swallow, to talk. It's like a, having a big potato in the mouth. On the other hand, if the vertical dimension is too small, as it often happens, people who have old dentures have a, a low have a diminished vertical dimension of occlusion which may cause trouble with the temporomandibular joints. Uh, so we should uh, find a way somewhere in the middle. The normal VDO is from two to four millimeters and there are some uh, some ways to achieve it. The freeway space as term, it's the space between the front teeth uh, when the patient is relaxed, the lower jaw is hanging, the patient is expressionless. Quite often I, I tell the patient to imagine a situation where he's watching a bad movie on the TV and you can just imagine the expression. The lower jaw is hanging, there is a space between the teeth, this is where you want to catch the patient when you determine the freeway space. We can measure the distance 
between the occluded wax rims and uh, relax the habitual rest position. Uh, as you can see, the soft tissues, even if they do not exactly or accurately uh, express the, the difference, because the soft tissues tend to, uh, to move a little bit anyway, you will have an impression of a couple of millimeters freeway space. Uh, so you can do it by measuring the distances or, and this is what I, I used to do, I, once I, I think I have cut the wax rims in order to, uh, to have the, the proper freeway space, I try to, ma I just make the patient relax and then at some point I say that now I'll just peek into your mouth and try not to move your your lower jaw and then as we have done it a couple of times I uh, perhaps will be able to see the, uh, the relaxed jaw and the freeway space. So uh, this means anyway that you have to become familiar, we ha you have to come to know the patient, you have, you have to become pals. Uh, the patient has to tolerate your thoughts you will massage the muscles a little bit, try to relax the patient. Anyway, we are touching our patients a lot uh, in the course of the treatment and, and, and most likely you'll, you'll get uh, happy and, 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 uh, uh, and uh, you make friends with the patient. So this will, this will work. Anyway, once you have, you're done with the uh, freeway space and the vertical dimension of occlusion, you will uh, define the working uh, position of the occlusion by gently guiding the lower jaw into CR, which means that the condyles are in the uppermost position. And then the patient will bite down. That's the position where we will build up the occlusion. I'm not going to talk about the different reference positions of the jaws in, in this presentation. However, for complete dentures or whenever there is one complete denture in the, in the jaw, we'll use the CR centric relation uh, for the, as, a, as the reference position. You can either melt the wax rims together or you can, as in this picture, use a thin layer of bite registration medium. Uh, by melting the wax rims together, it may become a bit tricky if you are not comfortable with a hot knife. The patient may be a bit afraid of it. Anyway, this is definitely a way in which you won't burn the patient. If there are uh, natural teeth in the mouth, of course, the indentations of imprints of the teeth in the opposing wax rim will make it easier to articulate the wax rims and the models afterwards in the lab. Uh, and especially if there are lots of teeth, the easier way it will be. Once, once we have fixed the, uh, the wax rims, the jaw relation records together, it's time for the technician to set up the teeth. He'll do it on an articulator according to, uh, to a set of rules. Uh, I'm not going to go into those details either. However, as you will see, the the dentures or the jaw relations records uh, the next time there will be teeth set up according to your wishes in the way you cut the wax rims everything should be there the midline should be there the planes etc etc we could use lots of different materials for the teeth however nowadays it's only plastic teeth we use porcelain teeth uh, they are more or less history. Uh, they may look a bit nicer, but it's awfully difficult to adjust the occlusion. They break more easily. Their retention in acrylic is not as good as that of the plastic teeth. So 
we will go into using plastic materials. The articulators, they are many, and um, in, in um, lots of countries in North America where I worked something like six years, uh, they had lots of different kinds of articulators from semi-adjustable to completely uh, adjustable ones and, and lots of dentists uh, had different opinions of, about the use of them. However, for the simplest uh, mounting of the, uh, of the cast and jaw relation records, we could perhaps even use an occludator, which uh, is the simplest of them all. However, a semi-adjustable articulator perhaps could, would be the best or the most suitable for, for your work. So, once the technician has set up the teeth, uh, we, will, uh, we will verify the results in the patient's mouth. We will also, of course, monitor the midline, the planes, the visibility. We'll talk with the patient. We'll get his agreement. He or she will, of course, she or he would like to show the teeth uh, to the neighbors and family members, etc. But quite often it's not possible to let the patient go with the uh, teeth set up in wax. So anyway, once we got uh, the acceptance of the patient and the occlusion looks, uh, looks good as well, will be ready to uh, process the dentures. Whether it's, uh, it's injectable or acrylic or, or whatever, it's up to you. Anyway, the processing uh, will perhaps make some small or minor dimensional changes, uh, especially in the position of the teeth. However, uh, they shouldn't become a problem. At the delivery, when the patient the first time will see the, the uh, finalized product, we'll have to give them very careful instructions. We have to repeat all the warnings. We've been talking with the patient all the time. All through the fabrication process, at every visit, we have repeated uh, what's to become, uh, what is there uh, lurking behind the corner with the new dentures. I quite often tell the patient that after the delivery, we will start the most difficult part of the denture fabrication because the patient has to deal with the dentures by himself. Of course, we'll help. The patient will return for control visits, but anyway, the patient will be all alone will, with all the pressure pots. He will be all alone when learning to speak, to talk, to, to, to bite, to chew, to eat, uh, to meet the neighbors, etc. And you must make sure that the patient will know that he or she will not be alone once the dentures had been given for the tryout period, we'll call it the tryout period because basically the dentures are not yet ready. The patient is only test driving them. So before the actual de delivery appointment, we'll make sure there are no sharp edges or or anything that might directly hurt the patient. We'll disinfect the dentures as they come from the lab. And then we'll have a small mirror and a big mirror for the patient to view at the dentures ready. Uh, when the patient is seated in the dentist chair and you start giving the instructions, make sure and remember, don't seat the dentures into the patient's mouth, but hold them in your hand. It's much easier to show the different things, uh, cleaning, brushing the denture, when the denture in in your hand. And before all, if you seat the denture into the patient's mouth, and then start instructing the patient, 
the patient won't hear anything. The information will go in and out from the other, ho other ear. It's only the dentures the patients know. They are the new things in the mouth. He's uh, confused, doesn't remember anything you're telling him. You will hold the dentures in your hand and give the instructions and the patient will be more concentrated and listen to you. Uh, when you give the instructions, of course, there are specific instructions for all different kinds of dentures. Now we have a complete denture and a partial denture. Whether you have fabricated a, uh, a bridge, a fixed uh, partial denture, or as we nowadays say, fixed dental prosthesis, or a crown, or an implant prosthesis, you always give different kinds of instructions. Uh, one common instruction is, uh, is uh, one common piece of instruction is the cleaning with all prosthesis. You have to show the patient uh, how to clean the dentures, a fixed denture in the mouth, removable denture, how you brush the inside of the denture in your hands under running water, if you want them to use any uh, cleaning tablets or materials, cleaning paste, you should show the patient. It's a good, by the way, it's a good idea to, when the patient is brushing the denture, to have some water in the wash basin so that if the, if the uh, denture will drop, it will drop into water and not on the floor or into the uh, into the dry basin and break. So anyway, we'll give the instructions. Uh, a denture brush uh, in case of removable, removable dentures, it's a good uh, investment. Especially for the complete dentures, uh, we'll uh, make sure the patient will understand that the retention of the dentures will, even if it were it most often is very good already in the beginning. Anyway, it will improve over a couple of days. The posterior border where we did uh, the post dam, the, you remember the groove on the, on the uh, master cast, it will make a groove on the palatal tissues as well, and as this will form, the seal will be better. With new dentures, the brains, with the new dentures in the mouth, the brains might imagine there's some food in the mouth, so uh, salivation may be increased for a couple of days in the beginning. And in general, it will take quite a lot of time to get used to the dentures. In the law, in the when we have a partial denture and, and we have the clasps holding the denture in place. The, uh, retainer, uh, the retainers, the, uh, the remaining teeth may be a bit sore in the beginning because the clasp will push the denture, the teeth against the denture, and at this time also the denture may become a bit loose. But however, you will tell the patient that you will activate the clasps at the control visit. The patient can also try to activate the clasps uh, him or herself at home every time when the clasps get loose necessarily the patient doesn't have to come to see you he can try to do it at home however you have to make sure the patient will do that very carefully the patient can use the dentures at night if he or she will brush them clean carefully of course, the soft tissues will be happier if the dentures every now and then are not worn. Uh, for example, at night the tissues will renew, uh, the skumous epithelium will loosen and, 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 and uh, the, the remnants won't stay under the denture 
uh, there will be less pressure spots and, and uh, tissue problems if the dentures are not worn at night. But as I mentioned, they can be worn if the oral hygiene is good. Uh, at the delivery visit, we'll also make the preliminary adjustments of the occlusion. However, we have to remember that during the first week or so, the dentures will settle down in the mouth on the tissue, so the occlusion may, may change a little bit. So the final occlusal adjustments will be made at the control visit. We have to remember that if there are natural teeth in the opposing jaw, in this case in the mandible, uh, they should be in contact. Uh, the perceptions of the contacts of natural teeth, they are a part of natural occlusion and the patient might feel a bit awkward if only the denture teeth are in contact. Also, definitely there would be lots more uh, pressure, pressure spots. And, well, of course, there always is the danger that in long run the natural teeth which are not in contact with the denture will start erupting. Finally, at the delivery visit, ask questions. If the patient feels comfortable, if it hurts, if he or she will be ready to or feels like being ready to move on, uh, to go and try and try to live with, with the new dentures. And especially if we have a retentive lower partial denture, we at least once have to ask the patient to remove and seat the denture. Because sometimes, especially elderly people who, uh, whose uh, motoric skills are not that good, might have difficulties in removing the denture. And always remember to grab the clasps. It's the clasps of the denture are like a door handle. The door opens much more easily if you pull the handle and, and twist it. The same way the denture will come out of the mouth much more easily if you grab the clasps with your for example, thumbnails. And then comes the control visit, which means that the patient has been wearing the denture for a couple of days. And quite often there are some complaints. Sometimes they are even severe and you will really have to talk the patient over into continuing uh, the, the triad and, and wearing the dentures, but most often it's only some pressure spots. The patient, especially if these are the first dentures of the patient, might require more time for getting used to them. But anyway, uh, the response, our response should be ready to every different kind of complaint or, or discomfort the patient is having. And now, if the patient is completely non-cooperative, at this point you will really see if you have done your delivery breathing badly, which means that you haven't prepared the patient for this most difficult part of the fabrication of the dentures, which you should have done during the course of the fabrication and then definitely, if not before, at the delivery visit. Most pressure spots are easy to find because the uh, soft tissues, the reeds, wherever they are, uh, are ready. They might be even a bit sore. You might use uh, simply a delible, indelible pen by marking the red spot, then seating the denture and hope the mark will be copied on the denture or just uh, by eyes estimating the, the spot where you should slightly grind or polish the denture. Of course, you can use uh, pressure indicator paste if it's available 
I don't like it personally. I rather use the indelible pen or just my eyes. Anyway, anyone can use the method he likes. Then there are hoops. There are <coughs> much deeper pressure spots where you really should reduce the border a bit more and advise the patient not to wear the denture for at least a couple of days. Now you have to remember that you shouldn't grind the denture too much. It's, much, it's so easy to grind off from the border than to increase or add uh, some material to it if you have grinded too much. Which means that you have to expel, explain to the patient that I'll only uh, grind a little bit of this, uh, this border or these pressure spots and once you have not worn the denture for a couple of days the tissues will subside, the swelling will be gone or at least it will be much less and then the denture will most likely be painless or at least it's, it will cause less pain. So uh, if we have a, a clear wound it will take a bit more time for them to heal and the patient will, be, will not be wearing the denture for, for, for a couple of days. And of course we'll check the occlusion again. Uh, the patient should be called for uh, control visits every now and then, especially if the oral hygiene of the patient is not that good. Uh, the remaining teeth are, have uh, carrier's risk. If there are periodontal problems, especially as uh, I mentioned before, in cases where the, den where the teeth perhaps are only waiting for in the mouth for over the time when the patient in general gets used to the dentures and perhaps we already know in the beginning they, that they have to be removed at some point but anyway these last remaining teeth may help the patient to get used to the essence of the dentures in general and so we may have to follow the periodontal status of the teeth however in general uh, how often we invite the patient for the follow-up visits. It depends on, on each case. So, this is pretty much all for today. I hope uh, you got some uh, something new, new or at, at least you listened carefully uh, my <laughs> my talk about the instructions and the management of the patient. Quite often they say that in prostodontics uh, psychology is about 50% of the whole work. This means that if you make friends with the patient, he or she trusts you, you get along well, the patient will complain much less or even if he or she had, well, reasonable complaints, you'll be able to deal with them uh, much more easily. And uh, in long run, it's much nicer to have a smiling patient at your office. So, thank you.